Here's an example on how to handle a change in accounting principle. For this specific example, we're going to talk about a change from LIFO to FIFO. But other changes in accounting principle should be handled similarly. For our example, we're going to imagine that the company began in 2017. So there was no beginning inventory, but there was ending inventory and LIFO was selected. Sometime in 2019, the company made the decision to go ahead and switch to FIFO. And that's great because that's IRFS uh, policy. But what we're going to look at is how to present the financial statements. If the company is going to show their 2019 financial statements and always shows a two-year comparison, we need to make sure that our 2018 and our 2019 all have the use of FIFO. So to make sure everything's working properly, the first thing we need to do is prepare kind of an income statement for the years 2017, 2018, and 2019. We'll first do it under LIFO to make sure that we're seeing exactly what the company has reported. Then we're going to do it under FIFO. We don't really need to do LIFO for 2019, but for consistency's sake, it just makes it easier if we follow along. So the first thing to do is to set up an income statement. We weren't given any information to set up an income statement, but as long as we use the same numbers and are consistent, it's really not going to matter because we're working with the change from FIFO to LIFO. We're not working with the actual bottom line net income. So for our example, you can make up any number as long as you're consistent, but I'm going to say that sales are two and a half million dollars. And that your other operating expenses are 750,000. And for the sake of this exercise, we're going to compare the changes, including taxes. So we're going to take care of that in and of itself. So step one is to set up an income statement using LIFO, because that's what would have been originally reported. So here is our income statement. Make sure when you're setting yours up that you identify that this is the LIFO one, so you don't get backwards um, and kind of confuse which one is which. But all we're doing is we're not really worried about the LIFO, the inventory changes, because that was, has flowed through to the cost of goods sold. But we end up with taking the cost of goods sold for each of the years, 772000 a million, and a million, 130000 We're going to subtract out, notice, the same operating expenses as we said we're going to imagine or estimate that we use. And we end up with net income for the years 2017, 2018, and 2019. Now we'll do the same thing for the company as if they had done FIFO all along. And the reason we're doing that is because we have to have a cumulative effect of a change in accounting principle. And this company is going to show its 2019 financial statements. It always does a two-year showing, so it's going to show actually 2019 and 2018. So we're going to have to readjust as if we had followed FIFO for the beginning of 2018 onward. So we're going to be consistent in our comparison. Here is the FIFO income statement. Again, make sure you identify FIFO and LIFO. You might not want to take that extra two seconds to add a line and identify it, but it really is worth it. Then you don't have to worry about how to handle everything. And we're doing the same thing. We're going to take our cost of goods sold, take that from our revenue that we said we're going to estimate, two and a half million, same thing under FIFO and LIFO. So we're going to take the cost of goods sold, allocate that to each of the three years, and then we're going to subtract out the operating expenses. Again, it's the same thing because we're not concerned about really the net income in and of itself, we're concerned about the difference between FIFO and LIFO. So now we have what our income would have been had we followed FIFO from the beginning of the company onward. And we calculated on the last slide what it was originally reported. So we can go ahead and make a difference and compare 
the income from one year to another. Now remember, we're going to be reporting the 2019 and 2018 financial statements as if they had always used FIFO. So I don't have to worry about the difference within those years because I'm going to show my new accounting principle. I'm really only concerned with what would have happened before I made the change. Fortunately for us, this company was only around one year and we only have to worry about making the change for 2017. So here's what happens. In 2017, income for LIFO was $978,000, income for FIFO is $930,000. The difference is $40,000. Because inventories reverse and of themselves and the company was just getting started, you can't always guarantee that your LIFO is going to be higher than your FIFO. Matter of fact, I think in 2018 it's the other way around. But for us, we need a couple things. You need to make sure you identify which of those income statements was FIFO and which was LIFO. And we're moving forward as if we had calculated FIFO all along. So I don't have to worry about the fact that it switches and FIFO is higher in 2018. What I do have to worry about is the income statements. We made the change in 2019. So there's actually a set of financial statements out there that have 2018 and 2017 on them and that's when they're using LIFO. I'm going to come around and I'm going to have a new set of financial statements that are going to have 2019 and 2018 and I'm going to show that I had used FIFO for both of those years. So someone's going to be able to connect all the dots. The first year of the company was 2017. So someone can actually go from the 2017 financial statements to the 2018 and 27 financial statements and connect the retained earnings. What they also should be able to do is go forward and say, we're no longer using LIFO, but I'm going to connect the 2017 ending retained earnings to what would have been on this statement had we used FIFO. And then I can trace that to the ending balance on 2018, carry the 2018 forward. The way we do that is to consider what's on each of the financial statements. Our 2018 beginning retained earnings is actually the ending retained earnings at the end of the year on 2017. But if I make my 2017 retained earnings have an adjusted balance, because I'm going to pretend I used FIFO in 2017, my ending balance of retained earnings 2017 becomes my beginning balance of retained earnings on 2018, and then I can show my financial statements as I've been using FIFO all along. And that's what we're first going to take care of. We're going to make a comparative retained earnings statement and show the adjustments. Here's that statement. If we had done taking care of the retained earning balance, it would have been effective as of January 1st of 2018. I'm not changing the 2017 financials because I'm not reporting on them, but I need to have all of my income amounts and retained earning amounts line up together. So my ending retained earnings from 2017 is my beginning retained earnings from 2018, and that's $1,150,000. i am going to take care of this $40,000 adjustment, and that is actually going to decrease my retained earnings because if you notice, income was higher under LIFO than FIFO. So this difference is a decrease in retained earnings. So I'm going to take the decrease, and I'm going to end up with the new retained earnings balance. That new retained earnings balance is as of January 1st, 2018, but we don't want anybody to ever pick up a financial statement and say, wait a second, I've got the old 2017, it's got a different retained earnings. So we're going to identify it with as adjusted, and that's going to link the 2017 financial statements to the 2018. So I'm just going to proceed as if it was normal. My beginning balance, had I used FIFO all along, in 2018 would be $1,110,000. i 
I had net income of 820000 and that leaves me with an ending retained earning balance for 2018 of $1,930,000. This amount calculates over or automatically transfers over to the beginning retained earnings on January 1st of 2019. I'm going to add the net income and I end up with the ending retained earnings on December 31st, 2019. So that is how you handle a change in accounting principle when you have to make the change retrospective.